Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news on Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffar. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister along with the Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Development Projects and Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa received the Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar at Qudaybiyah Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's government services are geared towards achieving citizens' aspirations, highlighting the importance of delivering housing units with high standards in line with the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of further strengthening coordination among all concerned government entities in order to enhance productivity and expedite the delivery of infrastructure services in Salman City, East Citra City and all new housing cities to ensure citizens benefit from the facilities within the specified housing areas. A brief was then given by the Minister of Housing on the final plans detailing the development of infrastructure services in Salman City. In addition to new housing cities, in line with His Royal Highness the Crown Princess's directives issued at the 2019 Government Forum. His Royal Highness expressed his appreciation for the efforts exerted in enhancing citizens' confidence in the government's ability to introduce housing developments, reserving special praise for the Ministry of Housing for their efforts in particular. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rajid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Hassan Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa in the presence of Interior Ministry Under Secretary Sheikh Nasser bin Abdul Rahman Al Khalifa. The Minister welcomed His Highness Sheikh Nasser and congratulated him on the issuance of the Royal Decree, appointing him as National Security Advisor and affirmed His Highness's competency to hold this position as part of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's wise vision and comprehensive development march to strengthen national security. Sheikh Rashid hailed His Highness Sheikh Nasser's role, distinguished approach and effective initiatives under the leadership of His Majesty the King, wishing him further success. They discussed a number of topics within the framework of enhancing security and stability. The meeting comes as part of the visits of His Highness to a number of ministries, government authorities and establishments, and meeting with officials in order to support the development march in the Kingdom led by His Majesty. The meeting was attended by Assistant Chief of Public Security for Operations and Training Affairs and the Director General of the General Directorate for Criminal Investigations and Forensic Evidence. The National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Ministry of Foreign Affairs where he met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and senior officials at the Ministry. The meeting is part of the visits His Highness Sheikh Nasser is conducting to a number of ministries, institutions, and government authorities to meet officials and support the development march of the Kingdom led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed appreciation for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that made your national role in implementing the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King to raise the Kingdom's regional and international status and make further achievements. His Highness affirmed the importance of teamwork between the Kingdom's institutions to develop national work and overcome all challenges, expressing appreciation for the Ministry's role in defending national interests. He noted the outstanding and effective participation of the Ministry in the Joint Drill Samoom, conducted by the Royal Guard recently, which asserts the Ministry's distinguished competencies and reflects its keenness on achieving success in all programs. For his part, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed and the Ministry's affiliates expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for the visit and meeting with officials, which stems from his approach of communicating with ministries and bureaus and to bolster cooperation between them. The Foreign Affairs Minister expressed deep pride in the Ministry's keenness on the policy of His Highness Sheikh Nasser, aimed at developing the role of the youth in various fields, emphasizing the Ministry's keenness on supporting all national initiatives undertaken by His Highness Sheikh Nasser, which are aimed at enhancing national security.
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fauzea Zainal, chaired today the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law and amending provisions of the Central Bank of Bahrain and Financial Institutions Law. The Council also approved an agreement on exploration and production between Bahrain's NODA and any company. The Council approved a draft law on private educu educational and training institutions and approved opening a documentation office for all documentation transactions in all governorates. The the Council also approved a proposal on the distribution of all services provided by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development without exception to all its centers. The Council approved establishing an emergency center in all Bahrain's governorates. The Council then approved the revamping Fada Harbor in Galali and providing it with electricity and key facilities. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, met with the Chairman of the Shura Council of Russian Muftis and the Religious Administration of Muslims of Russia, the Grand Mufti Rawi Ain al-Din. SCIA Chairman conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his wishes for further success to the Council. He also congratulated Sheikh Rawi on being granted the National Order of Merit from the Russian President Vladimir Putin for his contributions to achieve peace and coexistence. The Grand Mufti praised His Majesty's efforts to support Russian Muslims and asked SCIA chairman to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King. The meeting also included discussions on the progress of bilateral relations. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated Saltwir Petroleum's 3 megawatt solar power plant in the presence of the President of Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, and executive management members from the National Oil and Gas Authority, the Oil and Gas Holding Company, and its subsidiary companies, and other energy related companies. The Minister of Oil stated that the Kingdom of Bahrain is dedicated to fulfill its commitments to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in terms of developing programs and plans to protect the environment in various vital sectors due to its impact on the country and citizens. He added that this plan is a distinct and ambitious step to reduce the use of natural gas to generate electricity, with, which contributes to the preservation of the country's natural resources. He noted the development of plans in the investment of renewable energy, such as solar power to generate electricity, which contributes in reducing the demand for the Government of Bahrain's electricity, which is a good initiative to develop the local market for the energy production sector in the future. During the opening ceremony, the team reviewed a brief overview of the project, in which several important points were mentioned related to the work of the new plant, which is expected to generate more than 5,400 megawatts per, hour per year. The Minister of Oil and a number of senior officials have unveiled the station's commemorative plaque and had taken a tour to observe the station facilities. Tatuir Petroleum Company established a solar power plant in February 2016 with an estimated capacity of 1 megawatt connected to the electricity of Tatuir to provide enough electricity to meet the total energy requirements of the company's headquarters in the region. The company is keen to use the latest technologies in its field of oil exploration and production while continuing its commitment to the highest standards of health, safety and environmental protection and the development of Bahraini cadres which supports the company's contribution in achieving more economic growth and social prosperity to the kingdom. Today we are inaugurating uh, the second solar uh, power plant uh, for Tatwir. Uh, this brings their total production at uh, 4 megawatts. Uh, it is uh, 6 to 8 percent of their total consumption. The cost is significantly less than the cost Tatwir pays uh, the electricity and water authority today, so it is a viable investment. Uh, we have with us the uh, Sustainable Energy Authority, uh, the head, Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza. We also have a lot of collaboration with the Electricity and Water Authority. We have similar projects that Tatwir has funded with the Electricity and Water Authority and the Ministry of Housing. We've put solar panels on 10 houses, and now we're assessing the, uh, the impact of that and whether there is a policy that can come up uh, and uh, c could be beneficial to the people. We're also working on a system called ESCO, where you, uh, uh, you put in uh, low energy consumption uh, appliances and equipment in buildings, and we will also put that to uh, a rigorous assessment, uh, together with the Sustainable Energy Unit and the Electricity and Water Authority. 
so now I can uh, honestly say that uh, the cost of solar is viable given where electricity tariff prices in Bahrain are and it is uh, an investment that people should look into uh, seriously. The Assistant Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Faisal al dosari delivered a speech during the Arab League Extraordinary Session on the Foreign Minister's level, which was held in Egypt. He affirmed Bahrain's stance regarding various regional and international forums to reject all Israeli practices in the occupied territories, which contradict and violate the resolutions of international legitimacy, especially Security Council Resolution 2334 of 2016. He added that Israel's establishment of settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories since 1967, including East Jerusalem, has no legal legitimacy, constitutes a flagrant violation under international law, and is also a major obstacle to achieving a two-state solution and peace. He noted that a comprehensive, just, and lasting peace in the Middle East will be achieved only by Israel's complete withdrawal from all Arab territories and the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital and the return of all Palestinian refugees to their lands in accordance with the two-state solution and in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative of 2002. Al Dosari affirmed Bahrain's support to the steps taken by the Arab League Council to deal with the repercussions of Israel's continued settlement building which would hinder the efforts of a just and comprehensive peace in the region.